Good morning, and welcome to the Heritage Foundation. My name is Jim Carafano. I oversee foreign and security policy um, here at the Heritage Foundation. Uh, I'm going to introduce our co-host, Samir, in just a second. I just want to say I really wish Prime Minister was here, because I've waited my entire life to want to say howdy Modi. It just sounds... But I, so I wanted to say anyway, um, you know, we've one of the one of the real privileges of, of working on this um, uh, issue for these years is the opportunity to partner with Samir and Observer Research Foundation, which is an absolutely world class um, think tank. And the it's one of the most rewarding things I've ever had to experience. And it's not just rewarding because they're incredible professionals and brilliant minds and creative thinkers and um, and just and inspirational. Just but also if you look about the kind of things that we've worked on and what's what's happened in the U.S. India relationship the last year, I just think it's remarkable. I can't think of any other geopolitical accomplishment that that mirrors this in watching the American uh, Indian relationship grow and. I, the only metaphor I can think of is really bad because I want to say Everest, which I do know is in Nepal and not in India. But um, it's like we're at the base camp, which is like no mean feat because that's like like 20,000 feet, right? Um, which is really an incredible achievement. But, but there's still this peak ahead of us with, to climb. And it's not just about the U.S.-India strategic partnership. Uh, it's about what we can do for our peoples together to make their lives better, which is incredible, and what we can do for the world. Um, India has become such a global force and a global vision, and we see new policies in the Middle East, Indian engagement in Africa, throughout the Indo-Pacific. It's just, you know, India's time as a as a global actor has come, and, not, and, and in such a positive and constructive way. So... Uh, there's, and these dialogues have always been remarkable for helping kind of pump that thing forward. So thank you all for participating. It's an extraordinary opportunity for us. We're really excited about where we go from here. And, and I just think the best days are ahead of us. And anytime I get to listen to Samir, I know my best times are ahead of me. So Samir, I'll, I'll turn it over to you. And again, thank you all for, for coming to the Heritage Foundation. Good morning and welcome to uh, this Heritage and ORF uh, conversation on India-US relationships. We've titled it India on the Hill. Um, and it's not uh, the hill in the sense of Everest, but it's actually hill in terms of Capitol Hill. Uh, and I think um, the reason is because over the years as uh, ORF and Heritage have partnered and produced research, and by the way, we produce uh, some really forward-looking documents together. 10 years ago, we did something on uh, putting together a defense relationship, and everyone laughed at us. Uh, today, we are $20 billion down that road. Uh, uh, I think nine years ago, we spoke about a quad and a triad and an India-US joint maritime posture. Uh, again, the Ministry of External Affairs came and gave a statement saying that this is not going to happen, and it happened. Um, a few years ago, we spoke about uh, the whole notion of uh, uh, the foundation agreements and India and US pursuing uh, those foundational agreements, they've happened. So um, I think uh, this relationship, and Paul is here as well, and he's been a party to some of those conversations. I think every bold idea that we thought about in the last 20 years has materialized. And I think one of the reasons we are having this conference is because some of us believe we have stopped being bold in the relationship. I think we are enjoying the plateau, and we need to shake the status quo. We need to disrupt our own uh, 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 you know, sense of satisfaction being at the base camp and put in that extra energy to climb the, uh, the peak. And in that sense, um, sitting in New Delhi at the Observer Research Foundation, we clearly believe, in, and uh, Mr. Joshi and others are going to speak about it in their panels, but I think there are three certainties for India as we look ahead. The first certainty is that the most important political and policy decisions that will implicate India's growth are going to be written outside New Delhi. It is going to be the decisions in Washington DC, in Brussels, in Beijing, and in other capitals, which are going to implica implicate our ability to grow, to maneuver, um, to uh, prosper. And therefore, India will have to learn to engage with a whole new constituency of actors who are writing those political scripts and policy ideas. And when we say India will have to engage with 
uh, these communities. It's not a, a India a, a monolith. It is the vibrant communities in India, from the parliamentarians to the academia to government folks to industry, who will need to start uh, dealing with the counterparts and with other constituencies. The second certainty, of course, is that the largest growth that India will experience in the next decade, uh, the largest share of that growth, is now going to be internationally linked. Opportunities lie outside India. And I think we will also have to, therefore, learn how to participate in international markets, in international uh, businesses, with international businesses. And of course, learn how to um, become keen actors in uh, what was earlier considered uh, an extern externality in our decision-making processes. So what was external now is intimately uh, internal, and India will have to understand that India's largest markets are outside India. That whole uh, domestic-led growth model is beginning to hit the wall, as we can see in the current uh, economic turn, you know, uh, downturn. There are limits to how much uh, uh, India, India can buy its way to prosperity. We will have to create new models. The third, the third certainty, of course, is, um, and we uh, genuinely are beginning to uh, put this together uh, at the foundation uh, and, of course, with partners such as the Heritage, is that um, the blueprint for the 21st century is yet to be written. I think the, uh, the political architecture, uh, the one that was um, devised post the big wars in the last century, have perhaps, has perhaps run its course. We need a new design, a new template for the digital age, for the data economy, for technology and the knowledge uh, age, for uh, the different and unique circumstances we experience today. And the question, therefore, we have, that we need to ask ourselves is that does India want to be sitting on the table, being part of the team that is writing that new blueprint, or do we still want to continue to be uh, the leader of the global trade union, which is uh, uh, opposing uh, the transitions that are bound to happen? And I think in that sense, uh, uh, the country that will be most important to us for all of these three realities that um, uh, we are confronted with is going to be the United States of America. There is no political future that India uh, would want which would not have the US as one of the most important interlocutors of the 21st century. There is no economic arrangement which will not see the India-US relationship being the most robust uh, in India's future. And certainly, there is no community which has more aligned to uh, the way we experience the world as the communities that reside in this great country. So uh, the ORF heritage uh, relationship um, for the last 10 to 12 years has been pursuing um, uh, uh, you know, lots of projects, research work, and events such as these, and convening such as these to, uh, with three purposes. One is build a community of people uh, who are invested in the idea of a stronger, robust India-US relationship build uh, research and research capabilities that help devise ideas for this future, and finally, um, create a, a, a larger ecosystem where we can attract other countries and other communities to join our common cause. Um, India on the Hill is actually about uh, this relationship that we are trying to nurture. Um, we, this is a pilot project, a test run this year. Uh, we are going to do this as an annual exercise uh, we have to be bold, we have to be audacious, we have to be grand. As we heard last night, um, whichever way you spin uh, the realities of today, like someone said, if this is the worst our relationship has seen for a while, I must tell you, and as Jeff said, we are in a very good shape. If this is the worst that we can be, I think we have done a lot to progress the relationship. I remember times when, when our relationships went down. There was no communication. We used to stop talking. That used to be the default mode. When we don't agree, stop talking, be petulant kids, and ignore each other. Um, at the worst of our times today, we have a robust institutional architecture. We have individuals who are uh, changing the status quo. And we have uh, uh, individuals such as Ambassador Shringla who are determined uh, to help us climb the peak that James was mentioning. So I think if this is the worst of our times, I think we are a very strong bilateral relationship. And if we are at a plateau or at the base camp, as James describes it, I think we have a beautiful view of the peak, and we should all be climbing towards that. So I hope these one and a half days helps us build that community, helps us build ideas, and helps us uh, create a sense of commitment to a future that we both deserve, that we both uh, need to work together and co-create. Um, so thank you very much for joining us. Let me hand it back to Jeff. Thank you.